Whether you're watching, listening or reading this, welcome back to the Rumpelert vlog where we're on a mission to raise £1 million for children's charities by run vlogging on consecutive days the distance of one lap around the world. It is a staggering 40,075 kilometres. It's going to take somewhere in the region of 11 years to accomplish. I'm going to commit to running whilst vlogging a minimum of five kilometres every day and I'm even going to do it barefoot style. So for those regulars will know I vlog about my passions which are entrepreneurship and running and most importantly how these topics link together to help people overcome the emotions of stress, overwhelm and anxiety by using exercise as a release mechanism. And it's a beautiful morning today, it's really hot, best weather for the first time, I think the second time this year it's been best weather. So uh, lovely to get back in the old running vest. A little bit breezy, but lovely, so I can't complain. And it's Saturday summary today, where we give you my weekly update on the journey of a serial entrepreneur. So please give this channel some support by subscribing, liking and sharing the content, and let's get started. So, my weekly update of my journey as a serial entrepreneur. I think it's been a better week this week, to be honest with you. Uh, we'll go through each prop, each business in order as normal, and we'll kind of assess and see where we are. But overall, it's been, it's felt a bit more positive. So, hopefully that's a good start. So, in no particular order, Property Empire Investments, which is my trading business, we've had a massive change of direction. There's a car coming past me. A massive change of direction in this business where one of the partners left who was fairly key in our, our northwest operation. So we've had to basically pull back from the northwest and look at alternative strategies for the sourcing business. And inevitably, with change, you can normally be looking at kind of a three month transitional phase before we can get up to hopefully hitting similar figures that we once were. So it's been a quite a drastic pivot in that we were sourcing acquisitions to um, refurbish and put long-term government-backed guaranteed leases on the properties as we sell them as an investment to try and give the investor a 20% return on investment. We're now moving more into rent to rent because of our lease provider in the south, which is a different company. They've got some really, really good rates at the moment, for, um, and, but it's all about speed. So it's a lot quicker sourcing rent to rent to kind of get the leases in place as opposed to sourcing acquisitions and having to go through the buying process. So we're kind of exclusively sorted, sourcing existing HMOs and uh, we're sourcing rent to rent HMOs that we're looking to get long term government backed guaranteed leases on. And in the interim, as we start building the pipeline, we've got about 40 in the pipeline that we've built up over the past few weeks, which is really strong. Um, We've also sourcing investors that are putting commitment fees down to secure a property. Now, generally speaking, anything about £500 a month clear will take on and hold through our holding business. Anything from 300 and above, 300 to 500 will sell. And uh, it's still incredibly good deals. I mean, you're looking at kind of 65% return on investment and above. So uh, it's an absolute no brainer. The investors are getting their money back, you know, Close to, close to a year, and then they've got a 10 year government backed guaranteed lease on it, so they're going to clean up over the, the coming months and years. So, uh, uh, Jack, a business partner, done a lot of promotional work on driving um, inquiries for the rent to rent deals, and I think we've had 10 people pay commitment fees of, uh, of 500 quid plus fat, so very, very solid five grand of revenue there. And there's loads more kind of people in the pipeline as well. So uh, pressure's on to get these deals sourced and secured, but we have 40 in the pipeline, of which there will be a conversion rate because the lease provider won't convert, won't approve every one, but we'll hopefully approve maybe 50% of them. So we'll have enough there in the pipeline, which will service the existing committed buyers. So um, that's pretty exciting. We've also got uh, we had another training day with 10 new commission only partners in our business who are sourcing and selling deals on our behalf. So we're starting to see 
properties coming through in the pipelines now as well, which is uh, from our sourcing network, which is super, super exciting as well. So we seem to have built this uh, fairly substantial network of people that are sourcing as part of our partnership program, sourcing as external sources. And uh, we've also got our partners, sourcing investors to sell to. So uh, that's pretty exciting stuff. And uh, this week we've finally seen a result in the revenue, which is uh, really, really important because it's been fairly dry since we've been dealing with the uh, partnership separation. Uh, on the down point, the partnership separation is still lingering, you know, kind of elements of negativity that we have to deal with. Ultimately, the ex-partner has kind of his own agenda. We have our new agenda. I wouldn't allocate blame on one side rather than the other, but when two people go separate directions and they're pulling separate, separate ways, but there's still an ongoing commitment to work together to service, you know, historical investment deals that we work when we're working together. So it's just getting priorities right and working that through. So I think we found some common ground now to kind of agree the way forward, which is, uh, which is reassuring. On to the next business, Property Empire Builder. That's the Two Squared Academy. Now that's where we managed to kind of grow our, our number of partners. So that's kind of all the partners came through the academy. And we're gearing up for another webinar kind of middle of June. So we're doing the, the work. We're also going to go back to using a chat, a chat bot and an SMS messaging facility as well. Because what we found out on the last webinar, we had a huge number of registrations, but the attendance, which was you know, being uh, nurtured by emails, the, the, the number of attendees was about you know, 10 to 15 percent of the number of registrations and the follow-up emails weren't uh, overly effective either. So we're bringing back the chatbot. Now the chatbot that we used last time for Facebook, it was great. I think we, we managed to get 75 percent of the people registered through the chatbot attended the webinar. So the downside is, is not everybody would be on Facebook Messenger, which is why we're integrating it with a text messaging service as well, which just allows us to send the text messaging reminders for when the webinar is, which will hopefully increase the attendance rates. So I'm quite excited about that, to be honest with you, uh, because if we get four to 500 people once again registered, and we're getting kind of 75% of them attend, as opposed to 15%, that's a big, big figure. We generally sell and convert at maybe 35 to 40% is pretty standard. So it's a significant difference in the academy. So really excited about that. So we're working hard on that side of things. So that's uh, really positive. And the good news is, because we've run this webinar a couple of times already, most of the funnel is already built. It just needs some tweaking and some changes here and there, which we're working on at the moment. So that's pretty cool. The next business is my property business. Pretty stable, pretty standard, pretty solid. Month again, we've got uh, tenants lined up. Had a couple of tenants move out, we've had a couple of tenants move in over the past couple of weeks. So, but it's pretty static in terms of performance. But interestingly, when times were tough, we had to raise some finance through the business. We've got the last payment, which has gone out, I think, yesterday maybe, which now means that there's about an extra four grand a month in the cash flow, which is really, really cool. So uh, excited for that, so that's really good. Um, but other than that, it's been pretty stable. That's the joy of fixed income. It doesn't change too much. It just ticks over pretty similarly every month. The uh, Rompreneur Challenge is, uh, is going live. It's officially being launched on the 1st of June. So we start accepting donations on the 1st of June. So I've been working on live streaming capabilities and we've managed to, to find a way to stream from a mobile device live across Facebook. Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, the whole variety of social media platforms. We've managed to find a, a fairly technical solution to going live across all. So there'll be more lives happening in the coming week, which hopefully will be really good. So excited to see the kind of traction we get with the launch. We've also got to start the promotional process as well as reaching out for collaborations to try and get as many people with big followings involved in the journey. So. Uh, Really excited about this. It's the one year anniversary. I'm officially over 7% of the way there. It's taken a year to do 7%, which is quite frightening, but it shows that I've got the staying power to do this. It shows people I'm deadly serious about this. So hopefully we can keep going, 
keep going strong and hopefully we can generate the donation levels that we are looking for so super excited about that so really really positive the website's good to go and live we've just got to set up the the payment merchants we're able to accept the donation payments and then um we're good to start taking them on, on the first of june so i'm going to be pulling a lot of favors in for that for that first week to try and get the donation levels growing which will hopefully happen so that's going to be pretty cool um so that's cool the social media agency we're gearing up to kind of launch that back end of the summer early autumn so uh we're starting to look at the, the planning side of what we need to do there but really excited about that business i think that's a high ticket monthly subscription business um it's going to be people heavy so we'll take on two clients fairly imminently when we get to launching that in, uh, in the back end of summer and once we've proven that those two clients are, are being looked after will then double the size of the the labor in the business to be able to do that to be able to scale it up and when we're bringing people in they're going to be based on pay as you go so it will be variable variable cost against variable income because obviously until we get a stable fixed income coming in from that subscription model we don't want to put commit too much overhead to it so people will come in on trial on a pay as you go and the ones that perform and do the job well will then get moved on to kind of more fixed based overhead type contracts so uh lots of excitement there property empire holdings which is our rent to rent holdings and acquisitions business um, we've got one deal which the contracts are being signed at the moment two that are close to being agreed and we should have another five or six hopeful approvals by monday or tuesday next week which will be um hopefully really cool each one of these deals is netting somewhere between 500 and 1200 quid a month clear so on a 10-year government back guaranteed lease and we're doing them on rent to rent so super super excited about the potential here and uh the sooner we can get these signed up and paying the better so uh yeah exciting times in that business <laughs> the construction and maintenance business is dealing with the kind of aftermath of the separation this doesn't make any money like we were hoping it was going to make because we're trying to deal with all the kind of aftermath and snagging related issues that weren't necessarily being dealt with correctly when we were part of the same team so there's a little bit of cost associated with that business which has drained any profit until we get going again in the south but you know what it's about doing the right thing by the investors which is the most important thing so we've kind of accepted that there's going to be a little bit of a hit in that business but all in all it's been a, a relative positive week and now the following the coming week coming up is half term so uh i'm having a a four day break i've got to do the launch on the way unfortunately but i run every day anyway so that's not really a big deal i get a little bit of break to recharge before we go at it again back in the next week so um so yeah pretty good overall so that's pretty much it for me today as always if you've got any questions on this stuff drop me a comment i'll respond to everyone if it's a bigger topic i'll do a separate vlog episode and tag you in but most importantly please do check the links in my bios where you can find out how you can get involved with supporting the Runpreneur Challenge which is all about raising a million pounds for children's charities by run vlogging on consecutive days the distance of one lap around the world so it's a epic challenge and you know it doesn't just have to be financial support you can give me some support with you know collaborating to push push my reach further the more people we get this in front of companies products people the more chance we're going to get of raising that money because it's a truly epic target so that's it for me today as always the content i vlog about entrepreneurship and running has always been linked to how it helps people overcome the emotions of stress overwhelm and anxiety by using exercise as a release mechanism and we all experience daily weekly pressures in the form of stress and uh, it's how we deal with those pressures can make a huge difference to how we progress in our lives and um, if you don't clear your head of these pressures and like you don't process what's going on and clarity refocus clear your head and move on these pressures grow and grow and grow like pressure builds in a pipe and uh you know it gets worse and worse and then very quickly if you don't clear these pressures you become overwhelmed and overwhelm is when you just have far too many things going on and you almost have a bit of a seizure and you freeze you don't know quite what you're you're doing and then very very quickly that can involve to kind of panic and anxiety where you're flirting with the edges of mental health going back to the 
pressure in the pipe analogy, the pipe will eventually burst. And that's when you have a mental breakdown, which is something we clearly want to avoid. Now I've been there before. I know what it's like. I've lost businesses because of this. I've, uh, I've lost business partners and I've almost been bankrupt. And uh, I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy. It's a horrendous experience. And there's no coincidence that in the last year of doing this running vlog, which is my release mechanism, I've made more progress in every facet of my life than I have done in the previous five years. Pretty staggering statistics there. So I hope there's enough social proof this stuff works. So my pledge to you is if you are someone struggling with this, drop me a message, okay? The Rumpreneur Challenge is not for profit, okay? Yes, we do raise donations, but they're always optional. Help and value is for free. So if you need it, drop me a message and we'll arrange a call and I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide on how we can get you back on the right path. I know this stuff works because my own personal story and I've also helped over a hundred different entrepreneurs over the past couple of years with exactly this. So um, the olive branch is there if you need it. Help is available. It's often free, you just have to be prepared to ask for it. So that's it for me today. As always, stay positive, stay happy, and I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>